thank you for joining us today and welcome to Healthcare Without Harm Europe's webinar on circular economy and the healthcare sector, where we will present the experiences of Flow2 Healthcare Platform. My name is Ana Cristina Gaeta. I am the Resources and Climate Policy Officer at Healthcare Without Harm Europe. And I will give you a brief introduction about why we decided to focus on the circular economy in the healthcare sector. So transitioning to a circular economy is all about changing the linear way that the European supply chain currently operates from, what is a res from where resources are extracted, products are made, and then are disposed to an economic model where resources are ultimately never wasted. To this end, the healthcare sector has a role to play in improving resource efficiency and minimizing waste. The healthcare sector is a major public purchaser of goods and services and requires a vast diversity of medical equipment, high-tech facilities, and also resources in the form of expert knowledge, personnel, in order to provide efficient medical care to their community. So considering the resources intensive facilities that hospitals are, they have the immense potential to improve resource efficiency, and one way to do this is through asset sharing. Healthcare Without Harm Europe wants to see Europe lead the world towards a circular economy. And we believe there is a huge potential for the healthcare sector to take matters into its own hands and explore the already existing strategies to improve and maximize resource efficiency and to reduce its environmental footprint of doing so. So this is why we're hosting this webinar today. We want to provide exposure to the already existing initiatives uh, that seek to facilitate the healthcare's transition to a circular economy. And we want to provide real life experiences of the hospitals that are already implementing such strategies and to connect experts and stakeholders that are, are, that are interested in learning from these experiences to ultimately uh, replicate these experiences in other hospitals around Europe and around the world. So before I turn to our first speaker, I will give a very brief introduction to Healthcare Without Harm for those speakers who might, for those participants who might not uh, be familiar with our organization and uh, the work that we do. So Healthcare Without Harm Europe is a nonprofit coalition of hospitals, health systems, and professionals that are all working in some way or another on uh, sustainable healthcare. And we work here in the Brussels office uh, to bring the voice of the healthcare sector to the European policy debate. We work on a number of different issues uh, that all relate to the healthcare sector, and we try to push for more sustainable policies at the European level. Through our awareness raising and advocacy, we also work to educate the healthcare sector to better understand its role and its impact on the environment and ways that it can uh, minimize these impacts. So Healthcare Without Harm is a global organization. Uh, we have regional offices in Europe, based in Brussels, in the US, in Latin America, and in Asia. And I wanted to invite you all to after the webinar, whenever you have a chance to go on this link, so you can check out a video that we produced that really explains uh, the principle of healthcare without harm and why we think uh, the healthcare sector should be leading in uh, environmental justice and health. So do no harm story.org. Here's our vision and our mission and our overarching goals. And our goal as an organization is to protect public health from climate change. We also seek to transform the supply chain in order to push for greener products and services uh, in the healthcare supply chain. And we want to build leadership in the healthcare sector because we really believe that healthcare se the healthcare sector should be at the front lines of advocating for environmental health and justice. So this is just an overview of the different policy areas that we work in. Uh, you will see here one of them is waste and resources. So in the scope of the circular economy so far, we have uh, just been focusing on uh, waste and specifically on food waste. But we are here today to uh, look at a different angle of the circular economy in the healthcare sector. And with that, I will introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Leek van Kirkhoven, who is one of the co-founders of Flow2Healthcare, 
and responsible for business development. Vic has a background in healthcare. She studied medicine and has been working in several managerial and organization positions in healthcare organizations in the Netherlands and, and abroad for the past 10 years. She experienced firsthand how much organizations can benefit from sharing their assets among each other, financially, but also socially and environmentally. From, from her passion to contribute to healthcare, uh, healthier healthcare, she co-founded the online platform Flow2 Healthcare. This is the first sharing marketplace for healthcare organizations to share equipment, services, facilities, staff, knowledge, and skills within or between organizations. Leek will introduce us to the concept of sharing assets and the opportunities presented for sustainable healthcare organizations. We have a panel of three uh, experiences from the Netherlands, and the second and third speakers are uh, representatives of hospitals who will share with you the experience of implementing uh, asset sharing in their institutions. If you have any questions as we go along, uh, you will see a, a box on your right hand corner and you can just type in your questions we will take them and note them and we will have a session at the very end for questions directed to any of the three speakers so with that i will pass on the screen to leek thank you very much anna <laughs> hello again um great to be joined in this virtual meeting uh, my name is Lika, like anna uh, already mentioned and i'm one of the initiators of flow to healthcare uh, and we provide healthcare organizations in all shapes and sizes with tools to start sharing assets. And I'll now explain more on what this is and how it works exactly. We live in an era in which we see a transition in the perception of ownership. More and more consumers are starting to prefer access over ownership. Following the Industrial Revolution in the past century, it became very common and also very important for many people to own a lot of stuff. We now see that people are moving away from this and start seeing ownership as a burden rather than something they desire. Their need is to go from A to B, not necessarily to own a car to be able to do that with all the burden that comes with that for maintenance and costs for insurance. They need clean clothes, not necessarily own a washing machine. This development fits in the transition towards a more circular economy. We come from the linear situation, like Anna just described, uh, where we take resources, make products, use them, and then dispose of them. In a circular economy, uh, we are looking for ways to keep the resources in the loop. This can be done, for example, by as focuses business on redistribution. So the sharing economy is an important part of the circular economy as such. There are thousands of online sharing platforms out there today, which people use to share virtually anything you can think of. Cars, bikes, meals, homes, jobs. The other day I even saw a platform that allows you to share your dog. Airbnb obviously is the most famous example for this. Now, go to steps in the gap of sharing between organizations. If people have garages full of stuff, then organizations obviously have warehouses full of stuff they are not always using and hence can be shared with other departments in the same organization or outside with other organizations. We call this sharing assets and it's applicable for virtually anything an organization owns to perform its core duties, like equipment, facilities like meeting rooms, services, excess stock and also knowledge of staff. Sharing your assets is primarily financially smart. What you're not using can generate additional income if you rent it out or sell it to someone else. Alternatively, you can save costs by renting in or buying from a colleague. Then secondly, because we are doing more with what is already available, we are avoiding production of new goods and saving resources and energy. And finally, this new way of managing our assets creates a new mindset that is based on looking for win-win situations. It stimulates collaborations within and between organizations that would normally not exist. It can be particularly helpful for merged organizations seeking a way to drive a cultural change and stimulate collaboration. You can also think of the gynecology department that is looking for a new ultrasound device. 
whilst cardiology, for example, has one standing idol. These two departments would normally not really interact, but now they share a common interest. <clears throat> As flow 2, we've also undergone an evol evolution since we started in 2012. We started with a global sharing platform, but then we discovered that although everybody thought this was a great idea and the way to go, organizations found it very difficult to go from good idea to good practice. Either capacity online for everybody to see, because it might be explained as mismanagement by certain press. As trust is a major factor in this sharing economy, we discovered that organizations were more willing to share with each other in closed communities or just within their own organization. So now we facilitate sharing on three levels, globally on flow to healthcare, locally in closed networks of organizations that are geographically close or connected through another common interest, and internally for organizations that want to connect their departments and facilities. The beauty of, of it all is that all these three levels can be interconnected as well. So, for example, you can have an account for your internal sharing marketplace, but you can also be a member of a regional community and flow to healthcare. So, if you have a chair that you want to uh, share with your colleagues, uh, and after a few weeks, it becomes very clear that your colleagues don't want your chair, you can just tick a box in your advertisement and it becomes visible to your regional network or to flow, to flow to healthcare where other organizations can find it. So basically, we are providing organizations with tools to spur the transition from static, everyone for themselves organizations, to more flexible organizations that value trust and collaboration. I'll end the general part here of this presentation. Now follow two case examples of hospitals in the Netherlands that have put this into practice. And I hope to hear from you in the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Leek. Uh, now our next speaker, his name is Wouter van Wij. He is a sustainability, sustainability policy officer with Radband uh, UNC, one of the major university me medical centers in the Netherlands. Uh, Rodbaum will launch their new sharing marketplace this month. Varte will share their reasons to start sharing assets or experiences and what has been the preparatory process paving the way for their launch. So now, Walter, the screen is yours. All right, thank you, uh, Anna, for the introduction. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining um, on this uh, webinar. So uh, I have about 13 slides that I would like to present to give you some information of uh, why we started the asset sharing, uh, the case that we recently launched uh, our marketplace just on uh, Monday. Uh, it's an interesting pilot and also I want to reflect on a couple of uh, lessons that we uh, got along the way. Um, yeah, as Lika in it said as well, I'm uh, available for your uh, Q&A afterwards, but also feel free to uh, reach out after the presentation. So just to kick off, um, the Radboud University Medical Center. So this is the University Medical Center. So we're one of the eight university medical centers in the Netherlands. Uh, our mission is to have a significant impact on healthcare and our strategic focus is uh, to use personalized healthcare to the patient as a partner, which basically means that the patient is part of many of our improvements and innovations and uh, active participants in decision making. Uh, we have three core activities. Uh, first of all is the patient care, but second, the research and also education. We're one of the larger employers in the eastern part of the Netherlands. Uh, we're actually located close to the German border. We have about 11,000 employees, 52 departments, more than 3,000 students, and we have about uh, 1,000 beds. And what you see in the picture in the middle is the campus. We actually share the campus with also the Radboud University itself, the University of Applied Sciences and other research facilities. So this is basically a hub in Nijmegen where a lot of healthcare innovation uh, and education is concentrated. So why asset sharing? I think uh, Lika did a good introduction as well as Anna, uh, why this makes sense. I have a background in logistics and economics. And one of the things is that um, for, uh, for assets is 
basically the efficient usage of your current assets and increase in the utilization of uh, equipment that you already have. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. There's, uh, first of all, you have uh, pooling strategies of equipment, but you can also apply track and trace. This is something that we experiment as well. A lot of equipment, people simply don't know where it is or uh, something might be three floors up, um, but people are just simply not aware what we have or even where some surplus stock might be located. And basically the increase of utilization, if you share your capacity within the organization, it's more efficient for your medical technology and also the uh, reach out outside of the organization uh, to use it so other people can uh, use your technology uh, to their benefits. And yeah, Lika also pointed out the economy, all the sharing businesses like Uber that are reaching out. Basically, it's also a business model uh, that we can apply to generate some extra revenue. And back in 2016, we did an estimation of what this kind of strategy could entail, and it was estimated that there might be savings between 10 to 15 percent on the medical technology. So let me get to the uh, case where uh, we are now launched the, the sharing place last Monday. So we focus on the Rabat USA technology centers. And basically, in a nutshell, this is a department or a network, and it's the main access point for uh, technological expertise and the support for research questions. So they have high-end equipment uh, and microscopes and uh, expertise at their disposal. So it's a knowledge hub for technological expertise and they have an internal role. So they advise fellow scientists, they advise management on strategic investments and opportunities, and they drive innovation inside the hospital. But they also have an important external role. It's um, easy access through the Rappert UMC technological expertise for other companies, for students, for PhDs, and they also are a great representation for the up uh, in the Netherlands itself, but also in Europe and abroad. And to give you some insight of what the technological centers entail, there's about 19 technological uh, technology centers, including a 3D lab, imaging centers, uh, microscopy, clinical studies, biobanks. So it's quite a broad range of expertise. Yeah, so this is basically the 19 focus points that we have. Um, asset sharing is not new for them. Um, they've been around for a couple of years and they already have some visibility within their uh, network. Uh, so they work together with the Rabat University, one of the uh, institutions that we share the campus with, but also with other research departments abroad. They have their own logo, they have their own website, leaflets, uh, they have lectures uh, abroad and international. And um, one of the interesting things is that they already had a marketplace on their website available. But uh, what we see in the next slide, um, which is interesting, they monitor the traffic. So here you see that they already have a large market of internal researchers, about 75%. Uh, they go for 25% external, and about 15% of that market is uh, actually a fee for service. And this is something that we definitely want to increase and experiment the upcoming year using the uh, Flow 2 pilots. So let me now get into what we're going to do in the next year. So this is basically the pilot. So we have set up a dedicated team of people uh, with a manager of one of the technology centers, but also someone with the know-how of the medical technology itself. We also have on board a couple of people uh, of the communication department because communication is key when it comes to asset sharing, both in your organization but also external. And we will have a monthly briefing on uh, yeah, some of the key process indicators that we set up. So one of the things that we want to look at is what items are most interesting to people to look at, how many views do we generate, how much traffic is going to the website, uh, how much traffic do we get per item, what is the response, and what is, the, uh, is there any trade going on uh, on the website. So we started out small. Uh, we took the technology centers first. Uh, you can also get the entire hospital on board, but in the beginning we found that asset sharing 
for most people, it's uh, either a new uh, phenomenon and it might be a bit scary to start off with. Uh, the technology centers, however, because of the previous expertise, were eager to jump in. Um, what we did, we used their already in place uh, marketplace and we basically copy pasted to the Flow2 website. Um, so we, we used that small step to get the people on board and last Monday we presented this marketplace to the uh, managers of the technology centers and immediately there was a, a positive response and people see the potential of this and they actually want to grow and expand it. We could have also used the strategy to put everything offline at the get-go, uh, but we decided to take small steps and see how we can expand from there. So there's definitely potential for growth um, for the technology centers and to get a detailed description of what they offer. And also one of the things that we're looking into is get all the departments of the hospital on board. But start small, there was definitely some of the things that we decided from the beginning to see and to get, uh, gain experience. Uh, so also one of the things that we made very explicit is we wanted to set out some objectives and a target. So for now, we want to increase the traffic on the website by 25%. That's about 475 unique users. We also want to assess the demands and see what uh, R2C gains the most popularity or what specific type of services or uh, products. We also think about uh, put a percentage on the increase in utilization that can be difficult depending on the uh, management information that is already available or in place. And of course the capacity planning. So basically um, when you start sharing uh, equipment, uh, you tr uh, try to increase the demand. Uh, and the thing is if we have enough supply, so for example if some, micros uh, in some training or some RTC gets a lot of demand, then also we want to manage the supply on our end and uh, see if we can manage uh, the capacity. And of course, a minimum turnover goal to cover the pilot cost. Our target audience, since we're working with technology centers, it's uh, quite a niche. So it's researchers and experts in the fields, uh, external companies involved in the research, but also students and PhDs that might want to use these equipments and technology and the internal market is uh, interesting for us as well. It's already 75%, uh, so there's a good uh, foundation there, but there's also potential for growth because people might not know what uh, the artists actually are offering. So yeah, we're quite excited. Last Monday we launched the marketplace. Uh, on the next slide you'll see that we gave it a personal uh, touch as well, so it's all in our own style and pictures and logos, so it's recognizable for the people within the company and recognizable for the people that already know the Vapat. And yeah, on the next slide you will see how it uh, looks like. So this is uh, some of the efforts that we put online. So this is uh, the Vapat Biobank, that is one of the RTCs. If you click on more info, they will, you will see what they have on offer. Uh, some of the RTCs, they already have 200 uh, of more over the 200 different items that can be used. Um, but also here we start small and see how traffic goes. It might take some time. So we started out in 2014 with the first talk and basically we got started with this, uh, this phase with the technology centers in 2016 and we just recently launched the marketplace. So it can be a long process but we're very eager and excited uh, to get started. Um, there's also a couple of other marketplaces that we already have. Um, for example, there's a marketplace for employees where they put their house or their apartments online. These are yeah, not necessarily competitors of ours, but it might be interesting for the upcoming year to see how these different marketplaces uh, can merge into one big marketplace uh, for the Rappa team, say. And on the last slide, I want to reflect on some lessons. So one of the things that we found very important is get everyone on board with the why. Um, circular economy is one of the reasons, but also for the technology centers is what definitely uh, also part of their business model and future strategy. So it's important that everyone knows why are you doing this? Why is asset sharing important? Involve the experts uh, on your team with the know-how. This helps in the communication with the people of the department as well, but also the shared understanding of what services, what products 
um, are good to share and have uh, the potential to generate a lot of traffic. Uh, communication is uh, very important and keep communicating. Uh, that's definitely something that we have uh, learned since 2014. Before you know it, uh, it's off the radar and you have to start from scratch. So keep communicating, keep communicating, and have a dedicated team that supports this and a plan to back everything up, also with uh, upper management. So the upcoming year, uh, we're gonna monitor traffic. Uh, we're gonna optimize the marketplace further. There's already demand coming in or questions like, can we do this, can we expand it? So that's exciting already in the first week that we uh, see uh, growth. Um, expand to different units, get surgery on board, for example, that needs to be decided. Uh, but I think there's a good chance that other departments are eager to join on the bandwagon, especially if one uh, department is already starting, then, uh, then it's easier to join as well. And uh, yeah, targeted communication is definitely with the technology centers that we need to take care of is that we target the audience that uh, is interested in the technology centers. But we have, with the help of Flow2 and uh, technology, uh, the people at the technology centers, uh, things look very promising. So we're at the start of uh, an exciting journey. This pilot will take up a year. And uh, yeah, we're uh, happy to share the results in the upcoming months and uh, see where this uh, takes us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wouter. So we have heard about the experience of Radboud in uh, setting up the process of asset sharing in their hospital. And now we will hear from Ted Antrach, who is the head of logistics at the Albert Schweitzer Hospital, also in the Netherlands. And Ted Hospital has implemented an internal sharing marketplace a year ago. So we will learn about the successes and challenges and the lessons learned. Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Ted from uh, Albert Schweitzer uh, Hospital in the Netherlands. Um, I'm joining this session with my cell phone, so I hope the, the sound will be acceptable. Uh, first of all, uh, we ch choose for the approach to start small and only uh, for the internal marketplace. And when we started, we uh, organized a brainstorm session with our board of directors and all the managers from the different depart uh, apartments, departments here in uh, the hospital and everybody. They recognized all the waste of materials, um, materials such as uh, cartridges or furniture, home trains, etc. Also personnel, um, they are temporarily uh, unable to perform certain tasks. Uh, they can still be uh, valuable in a different capacity elsewhere in the organization. And in this project, project group, everybody recognized this uh, situation. Also, our CFO was uh, present in the meeting. Very important because uh, in the first time he has uh, uh, gave the budget to start the project. The big question we had was how to bring together the supply and demand of available or needed hospital equipment, access stock, and personnel within the organization. That was our big question. How do we organize uh, that? So we knew what already uh, was uh, available in the internet, intranet of our hospital. So we said, well, what is available? Internet, bulletin ports, and what kind of other opportunities are there? Uh, we also use uh, methods of how do we order products but everything was too expensive, so we said, well, we have to look, uh, we have to look also on the internet and what can we find. There are some national examples we looked at, like uh, markplaats.nl or ebay.com. But markplaats.nl, they didn't want to help us, and the only thing they did was uh, pointed out all the legal aspects of copying or using their format, so we didn't uh, use them at all. So we searched uh, the internet and we stumbled on Flow2, and Flow2, well, they um, supported uh, a marketplace in the same way as we want to use it. 
Um, they offered an intra-company uh, sharing marketplace with an, a, a unique tool and that helps also healthcare organizations make more efficient uh, use of the assets. Um, the shared marketplace connects also departments and facilities, access stock, knowledge, and also personnel available. So that was the right place for us to try to search if it uh, was going to help us or what we wanted. Well, this is how it looks like. This is our uh, uh, homepage from our website, and we called it uh, Win Win Win. Uh, due to our uh, enthusiasm and uh, persuasiveness, we had to had permission from our financial director to start also the uh, digital marketplace. So we started uh, in all the hospitals on how do we communicate this and how um, and which personnel can start also with using the marketplace. In the first start we had, uh, the marketplace was only available for employees of the uh, hospital. Only the managers were able to post on uh, the items on WinWin, and only equipment and materials which we can or which can be used in the hospital. Um, no meeting rooms were allowed, and no transfer of cost. That was the uh, main target for us: no transfer of cost. So if you if you uh, move an item from one department to another department, no transfer of cost, only the materials. Well, what were our obstacles ahead? Well, HR questioned if offering tough skills could lead to offending privacy of um, persons. Um, we just offer tasks and these tasks can not be related to certain persons. Our technicians want to be sure that equipment was traceable for maintenance and repair. Uh, it was changed from when it was changed from one apartment to another because we want to track where all your equipment is. So it's an uh, important feature to follow where it is. Um, our department responsible for moving furniture and hospital wants to also. Um, be sure that moving big equipment wouldn't cause any damage to the building. So we have to we had to discuss all these uh, problems in a management uh, meetings, and we solved all these problems. So that was our main goal, and then we could start. What were the tasks from our from our uh, project group? Uh, first, we were responsible for uh, the business plan. Uh, in the business plan, we had to point out what uh, um, return on an investment uh, was. It was not our main goal, but it's still important. Then second, uh, the communication, communication plan, just like uh, Radboud already said, how do you communicate and stay focused with your organization and keep everybody involved? Also, in the contact with uh, Flow2 is one uh, of our main tasks with the project group because you have to uh, the infrastructure of how do you set up the whole site was done by uh, Flow2. Then, of course, the involvement of all the people joining as a um, person who can place all the products on the marketplace. You have to decide uh, who can. Uh, see the website and who can post all the items on it. After a period of time, it is important to stay focused and, and also to have a good instruction for the uh, primary users. And it's also important to uh, um, a task for the product group. How do we handle the mail and how do you keep the project under attention in the hospital? Um, all the transactions, well, um, it is important to be sure that all the transactions you want to, um, to, to make between the different uh, departments that you can follow what, what happens. Because otherwise, um, as a project, uh, project team, you don't know what is happening because everybody posts uh, a product and um, 
when it's uh, exchanged from uh, ownership, uh, people um, post new one. So, but you have to know: is it uh, still accurate, or do you um, show only products which already moved from one uh, uh, department to another? The items we uh, moved um, between different departments are furniture, office supplies, uh, also some uh, medical equipment, uh, a home trainer also moved, and of course cartridges, whiteboards, uh, envelopes, uh, A4, paper, and so on. So how do you keep the attention on the win-win internal marketplace from our perspective? Well, to keep it on the uh, attention of our personnel, we regularly posted items on the internet and company-wide company magazine. And also new users received the manual how to use Win-Win. Uh, and there also was uh, some attention from uh, a Brazilian paper. We didn't know how it got there, but there was some attention from also a Brazilian paper. So. You could see it's more than only an internal marketplace. So, how's the future? Well, in the Dutch society, there's a lot of attention for the shared economy. Uh, we see, received a lot of questions from a wide scale of companies uh, how to start such a marketplace as we used and called it in Lin. And local, in the nearest future, we want to share equipment and knowledge or even meeting rooms with other medical organizations in our region. So if you have any questions uh, about uh, setting up uh, an internal marketplace, you can also email to me and I will, I will follow up to your questions if you have. Okay, thank you for your attention. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ted. Um, I am very happy that we were able to have uh, all of these three presentations today. We we had uh, Lee presenting the platform itself. We learned about the uh, process of implementation and also the experiences uh, one year later. So th thank you for that. Uh, now, if anybody else has any more questions, this would be the time to put them into the box here. I would like to start with a general question directed to Leek about what about if a organization or a hospital would like to start the process? What are the first steps? Uh, well, thank you. Well, um, one of the major first steps, and I think Walter uh, described that pretty clearly, is uh, recognizing the potential that sharing your assets has financially or sustainability or socially. Um, and then you need to get together a project group uh, of people who see, who have the long-term vision and who see the potential uh, and who are able to cause this change within the organization. And then what's also very important is that, that you have the blessing from above. So you need uh, approval from the board of directors that uh, this is a good idea. And they also see the opportunities and uh, they allow you or your colleagues to invest time. Those are the major three things uh, to get started. Thank you, Leek. We have another question here for Wouter. And this is about the kinds of assets that are available in the marketplace. So uh, a participant wants to know how long or how short this list is and how does the arrangement require formal agreement or just informal ones. So if you tell us more about the, the uh, products that are being shared. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. So right now we have a basic description on the platform of what the technology centers has on offer. So that basically means uh, what do they do, what is the scope, and a general description of how you can get in touch with them. So there's, um, in most cases, there's a private email address of the manager or a phone number. So feel free to reach out and they will be happy to share uh, more of what they can do. Because since it's a niche, most of the time, it uh, requires uh, understanding from both sides of what the research question is. And in some cases, uh, that's conversation alone can lead to a different technology 
where um, the person initially didn't thought of. Uh, but definitely there are also a couple of specific uh, products like uh, microscopes where uh, right now we're uploading uh, that type of equipment. Um, it's over 200 different types um, that are now uh, getting available. So uh, yeah, I would say check it out and see what's there. And definitely feel free uh, to contact the people uh, that are on board of the RTCs. Thank you, Walter. I actually have a question uh, for any of the speakers because uh, skills and knowledge sharing was also mentioned quite a bit. Um, so I am wondering if this has been implemented by any of you or if it's in the process or in the plans of implementing the knowledge. exchange of knowledge um, in the marketplace. Um, yeah, with, maybe I can give a quick answer uh, on this. Um, we just recently started on Monday. Uh, there's definitely growth and potential next to having certain types of equipment uh, that you also yeah, have in services of and training. So with the technology center, since it requires um, a lot of knowledge, both from uh, well, but, but most of the time it involves a specific research question. So I think at first the contact, uh, the initial contact will uh, revolve around skills and knowledge. On yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for your answer. Um, if anybody has any more questions, uh, this would be the time. If not, uh, we have the contact of all of the speakers here, so I am sure that we'd be more than happy to answer them afterwards if you would like to get in touch with them. Uh, also note that this webinar will be online, so if you want to go back or share it within your network, it will be on our website. Um, and I thank everybody for joining. This has been a really interesting session, and any other questions or circular economy discussions, we are happy to continue. Thank you, everybody. And with this, I uh, close this session. I wish you all a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Thank you to all the speakers.